whatever type of IT services you are using or applications you are using on your mobile phone, probably behind the scene there are some data center where these applications are getting the required compute and maybe processing and the storage. So let's focus on data centers, very basic building block for any cloud infrastructure. I'm taking a definition here from amazon.com. Amazon says a data center is a physical location that contains the infrastructure that IT system requires such as servers, data storage drives and network equipment. So that is the fundamental block of any application that you need compute and compute will be provided by your servers. You need storage that will be provided by the storage drives you are using. What type? It can be a different question and you would need network connectivity so that you could access those applications or access the data which you have stored into cloud. So these component make up the data center. Now this is a formal definition. If I have to give you a definition of my own, I would say it's a building or a floor or a closet in which I have kept my equipment who would power my application. And that equipment could be networking related, storage related, compute related, and maybe supporting equipment like power and maybe cooling equipment. So all the equipment put together, size can differ. Size can differ based on enterprises, like they may have huge big size data center, a small a mom pop shop, they would be having maybe a closet in which all their resources are there and they use it. Or maybe talking about companies like Amazon, they may have huge floor or huge buildings in which these data centers would be hosted. So it depends, but basically it contains the infrastructure to power your application. Now, if I'm talking about based on ownership bifurcation of data center, there are different ways of bifurcating data center based on their availability, based on their proximity and all. But let's focus purely, purely based on ownership, like who owns these physical data center. The most common one would be enterprise data center and we will talk about them one by one. Then there can be some managed services data center. There can be some co-location data center and then can be cloud data center. Again, it is not a technical bifurcation. I am talking about bifurcation in terms of who owns this infrastructure. Now, the most common one which people hear about is enterprise data center. A big company, Amazon or maybe another company has set up a infrastructure, a private facility. So maybe within their own campus, they have set up the infrastructure and on that infrastructure, they run their services. It is owned and operated by a company for their own usage, maybe payroll application, maybe employee attendance system, maybe their finance application, all of that may be running inside it. Most often they are housed on corporate campus. So within the building, maybe a floor, maybe a section is dedicated for hosting the data center. And in this case, you means your company sets up this data center, manages its ongoing operation and purchases and maintain the equipment. So they would keep on performing common operation like adding capacity, maybe increasing the network band with maybe ensuring cooling is happening, ensuring that you could scale those data center, cable will be laid out. All these things will be done by enterprises themselves. That is a very common approach which companies initially started with. Another approach could be, hey, I am not a company who wants to get involved into this maintenance of this data center. Can somebody else do it for me? So yes, that could be possible. That is where we talk about something called managed services data center. The concept here is that like I'm not interested to maintain the whole stuff like I want to have a good meal, but I don't want to have a kitchen and then cook for myself. What I want, I want to go into a restaurant and have my meal there. I would pay for what I use. Similarly, we have here something called a managed services data center. It is a data center that is managed by a third party that leases the equipment and the infrastructure. Like you may have heard about car leasing companies. So these companies lease car, you use it for a while, pay the amount you need, but you do not own the car. You still maintain the car in case some operational things happen. Same thing here. So here what you could do, you could go to a third party service provider and say, hey, I want to lease some equipment and infrastructure rather than buying from you. So they may have tons of servers and storage and you could go ahead and say, okay, my requirement is I need 50 of these 
uh, server with 20 CPUs in that I need around 20 terabyte of storage and I would be needing 2 GB of network bandwidth whatever the requirement I'm just making up the numbers here so these service provider would have that require that available infrastructure and then they would lease it to you so that you can then connect it remotely and then perform operations on it like install configure and run your application from there that is a very common approach which is called managed service data center so companies like Rackspace would come into this kind of situation like they give you the physical location on which you connect obviously do not go physically and then do everything you connect remotely but you get a space to run your application that is your rec space type of companies are doing they lease equipment for you could be virtual equipment could be for physical equipment we'll talk about that later another one is a co-location data center let me give you an idea that what it may happen maybe i'm taking a step forward so let's say you were running your own data centers initially as a company now what you did you then said okay i don't want to get into this business and let me now move my 95 percent application to a cloud provider so i moved into a cloud provider my 95 percent applications are running from there now I still have 5% application. It does not make sense to keep on my data center fully running with that full capacity for this 5% of my application. So what I could think of, if I could figure out some other company who may have a physical space available and what I could do, I could go to them and say, hey, you already are running data center and can you rent me or lease me a space within your data center? You still take care of things like cooling, you still take care of of things like power requirement and then companies will sorry your company will take uh, your this data center provider would take care of cooling power network connectivity and all and you get a space and within that space you could move your physical server so, so that is what we mean by co-location facilities so that is another type of data center which can be used probably if you have small amount of servers to run and you need a proprietary type of server to run you don't want to run the building maintenance associated with it you could move your equipment into a service provider's location that is what we call a co-location facility so it is a data center white space is rented out to individual companies to host their hardware equipment so the space which they are giving to you that is referred as the white space so in that maybe we got this section and there is a white space given to me and this data center hosts the infrastructure building cooling bandwidth security will be taken care by the provider company and i just move my equipment here and afterward i connect remotely and then i start performing all the operations on that so in that way i still have physical ownership of the equipment but not owning the infrastructure on which my physical equipment is running so that is called my colo or clo location data center colo is a very common term which you will hear cloud professional talk about now now comes cloud data center. If I'm talking about companies like Amazon, AWS, Azure, Google, these companies need huge infrastructure to run their application or support their business. In that case, what they do, this is a data center where data and application are hosted by public cloud provider and that's why we are calling it cloud data center. It may not be a place where I can go ahead and say, hey, I need to rent a space, can you rent a space to me? No, but what they do, they give you services and you can then use those services and pay for as you use those services. So that could be possible. So in cloud data center, you rent both spaces space and infrastructure so here what you are having you do not own any infrastructure you do not own any physical space and you still are able to utilize these let's say you want to run a application a web server or maybe you want to run your salesforce running from these data center so that may be possible these are called cloud data center so these are the most commonly used data center you will find when we discuss about aws aws has concept of availability zone and region and that is what makes up these now just a tangent let me explain a little bit on aws side of the thing so what aws is doing all over the world aws has hosted their data centers so maybe this is data center one two and hundreds of data center they do not publish this location or information to anyone now it may be possible that if I keep all my infrastructure into one data center and if it fails, my all the infrastructure will be down. So what they do, they ensure that this is not only one data center, but there are multiple data centers put together. So let's say there are DC1, DC center 2, and then data center number N, which are there. 
and then AWS creates a logical grouping on top of it and that logical grouping is referred as availability zone or AZ for short. So behind the scene, everything is data center, but you do not see data centers at all. If you are a customer, you may see availability zone concept and you would work from there. And then what AWS is doing, they combine multiple of these availability zones. So let's say this is my AZA, this is my availability zone B, this is my availability zone C. And within this availability zone, obviously there will be lot and lot of data centers which are making up this availability zone. These availability zones are now combined together in a logical grouping and that grouping is what AWS refers as a region. So all over the world AWS would host regions. Those regions would be made up of multiple availability zones within them and those availability zones would be made up of multiple data centers within them and every data center would have its own equipment, own infrastructure and that's how they serve application to you. So as a customer most probably you would be connecting to a region endpoint or a regional door from which you access services and then depending on the service you are using it may be then accessing data or resources across availability zone but you do not see all this information you just connect to an endpoint and you then start accessing all the services you need so hopefully this gives you idea that how you could differentiate different type of ownership in terms of data center if I talk a little bit more on the technical side of the things, you may find that people talk about some different tiers associated with data center. What we mean by that? Tier 1 data center, they would say, okay, we would provide you the basic capacity you need. Tier 2 will say, okay, we would have redundant components also available for you. Obviously, your cost would increase. Then Tier 3, they may have concurrently maintenance happening, so you do not have to worry about maintenance windows on them. And then Tier 4, they have a fully fault-tolerant infrastructure, and through that, they serve you. And obviously, if they are giving you additional services, the charges would increase based on that. Now how we manage or how we measure all this information. So we talk about uptime guarantee when it comes to data center. So when you are going into a data center for hosting your application, probably you would ask or read their documentation about what uptime guarantee they are giving to you. Is it 99.671%? Then it will be a tier one data center. If it is a tier four, they would be giving you 99.9995% of uptime guarantee. Again, it does not mean it will never fail, but they have mechanisms in place who would ensure that even if one of the component of the data center fails, they have redundancy, they have fault tolerance, and through that they can keep on your application and services running. So this is how data centers are bifurcated. You can get more information about it on this particular link. I would clear keep this link within the resources section so you could look into it. So I hope this thing is clear. In the next section, we'll talk about what is inside these data center. Is it only IT equipment or there are some additional equipments also. So we'll discuss about that into the next section. Thank you.